Hi, this is Amy Romeo from the jewelry making and craft blog, amyromeo.com. And on this channel, I share fun and easy jewelry making and craft projects. Today in this video, I'll be showing you how to make these fun and easy, trendy stud earrings. I'll be showing you how to cut them with a Cricut and also two other ways that don't require a Cricut. This is a great way to use your faux leather scraps and you can turn some of those scraps into cash. So if you're ready to learn how to make these, I can't wait to show you all my tips and tricks. So let's get started. First, let's talk about stud earrings and why they're so popular right now and why it's a great idea to add these to the jewelry items you're offering to your customers. So if you're not familiar with what stud earrings are, they're not the studs that your mom wore in the 80s. They have a bezel setting, so sort of a lip around the edge and whatever you put inside sits inside of the edge. So it's a much more modern, clean, finished look than a stud that just sits on a post. So here's an example of one that doesn't have anything inside, and this one has a little circle of a leopard print faux leather. The most popular sizes for studs are 10 millimeter and 12 millimeter. So here's the 12 millimeter and here's the 10 millimeter. I'm gonna give you an SVG to cut these shapes, these sizes from faux leather on your Cricut if you wanted to explore those sizes. I'm also gonna show you two other ways to cut these sizes, but just so you know, these are gonna be the most popular ones. There's a couple different options for the settings too. So this is just a plain stud with a post. This one has a small loop at the bottom. Let me see if I can show you this better. This one has a loop at the bottom. So the glitter faux leather is inside. There's a loop on the bottom and you can hang things. There's also ones that have that hang like a pendant. Again, these are all 12 millimeter size. So this one comes with the uh, with the finding and the earring hook attached at the top. And then there's also some pretty wood ones that I've seen on Etsy and on Amazon where instead of metal on the outside, it's wood. And I'll link to where I got all of these supplies. Um, a lot of these are from Amazon. These are stainless steel, but they come in a variety of colors and finishes. Some, you know, sort of copper look, a darker stainless steel look, a, a gold finish. So you can really get these in any finish, any metal finish or any kind of wood finish that you like. And let me show you how these make your earrings look more modern and just kind of a fresher look. So here's an example using my, one of my SVG files in my shop, my Modern Shapes SVG. And here it is with the regular post and here it is with a stud. I think that adds a really nice fun look. And even with my feather earrings, another one of my SVGs in my shop. You can see the difference just with the hook and then here with the stud on the top. And another reason these are great is because they're so inexpensive to make. So these little studs can be anywhere from 20 cents a pair, 30 cents a pair on Amazon just for the backing. And then if you're using faux leather that you already have laying around as scraps to put on the inside, it's really a no brainer. Amazon has these cute little earring cards that fits three studs and you could add, you know, do three studs out of scraps and sell these to your customers. I've seen sets of studs like this sell for $6 if they're faux leather, all the way up to 10 or $12 if they're genuine leather. So it's really great value for your customers and it's a good way to use up some scraps. So I will be showing you how to use the SVG file to cut the circles with your Cricut but I also wanted to show you two other ways that you can cut these circles for studs without a Cricut. And the first is using a paper punch. I'll link to where I got this on Amazon and you won't be able to cut things like genuine leather with this. And there are some faux leathers that will be tricky to cut, but it's just like when you're cutting with your Cricut, you have to sort of experiment and see what will cut best. What I like about this is it does seem to cut um, glitter chunky glitter faux leather really well. So it's just like any other paper punch. You just kind of line it up and you can see in the little preview screen where the circle is going to cut. It's best to do it flat on a table, but I'm trying to demonstrate for you. See how cleanly that cut out. Now it won't cut everything as cleanly, but if you cut something 
let me put this back. If you cut something and you get a lot of little stray strands, you can usually just trim them up. Well, that one cut pretty well. You can usually trim them up with some scissors. So let me get this out of here. See how there's just a few little, few little strings. I can just trim those up with scissors. Some things you'll punch with this and it just won't work. So in that case, I would recommend using a Cricut or a Silhouette to cut your circles. If you're using genuine leather or a really thick material, you can also use a leather punch. This is a 12 millimeter leather punch. I got this on Amazon and this works with a hard surface like a cutting board and you wanna use a rubber mallet and you would put your material on your cutting board. I won't do it now because it's very loud, but you would put your material on your cutting board and you set this perfectly flush and then you have to hammer it very evenly with a mallet on the top here to punch the hole. I will say I don't love this technique because I, I'm not able to get really clean holes in a lot of these faux leather materials. This is good for genuine leather though, and I will link to this for you. And the other thing I wanted to show you was the studs are popular now because there are a couple other things you can do with them. There are these, you can also put cabochons in them. So these are some, these are called Druzy cabochons. I'm sure you've seen these where the finish is very sparkly. I got this entire box of 200 of them. I think from Amazon, I think they were five cents each and you can go through here and just pick out the ones that you like. And here's the little stud and you just put a little glue, which I'll show you and you pop it in. So again, imagine an earring card like this, just filled up with cute studs, with druzies, with faux leathers, with glitter faux leathers, and you have um, a great little item to offer your customer. Another thing that's popular now is there are also glass cabochons. So it's a dome of glass that's made to fit into this setting. And what a lot of people are doing is printing out designs, either designs or team names or words, whatever you want, a little tiny picture, cutting it out, gluing it inside, and then gluing the cabochon on top. And if you want me to make a separate video showing you how to do that, I'm happy to do that because that's another very popular use for these studs nowadays. So let me go ahead and show you how to cut the shapes out with a Cricut and then I'll show you uh, my favorite way to glue these and get these ready for your customers. If you'd like the free SVG and DXF files for the stud earring circles, it's in my free resource library on my blog at amyromeo.com. If you have the password, you'll click right here to enter the library. If you don't, you'll click get a password and let me know where you need the password to be emailed to and I will send that to you right away. Once you have the password, you'll return here, click on the library tab and look for design number 170 and that will be the earring circle template. I'll have an SVG format and also DXF format for Silhouette users. Both of those files will come in a zipped folder so you'll need to unzip it before you can upload those files to your design software. So once you have your SVG download folder unzipped and the SVG is loose and available to upload, you can upload it to Cricut Design Space. And you can do that by clicking upload image and then browse and browsing for where the loose SVG file is saved on your device. I've already uploaded it here and I have it in my recent uploads row. So I will just click on it to select it and insert it into my canvas. And the light blue circles are exactly 12 millimeter size and the dark blue circles are 10 millimeter size. And I've given you just a few because I want you to be able to use these a couple different ways. One is to have a large piece of faux leather and just copy and paste this entire section and give yourself lots and lots of circles to cut out all at once. Another way you can do it is you can hide these and only use, only leave the ones that you want to cut. So I'm doing that by clicking the eye icon. So let's say I only want to cut just a handful of these from a scrap. You can do that as well. The third option that you could do is 
if you're already cutting other earring shapes, for example, this is my petal pattern, if I'm already cutting these, maybe I want to take advantage of some extra space on my canvas and cut some circles. So let me hide just a few of these. If you want everything, all your shapes in your canvas to cut from one mat, which is what I would want in this case, then you'll just need them all to be one color. So I've selected all of these shapes and I'm going to color all of them the same. And what I would do in this case is click make it and I'll just show you what that looks like. So here are the teardrop shapes that are going to cut and then here are the circles and you can drag them around to fill up some empty spaces. So that's another great way to use these circles. But I'm not going to cut that this way now. Let me delete this layer and we'll just work with this layer. As you can tell, I've already changed the color in my canvas. It doesn't really matter what the color is because you're just going to be cutting it out of whatever faux leather you choose. So I will click make it. And I'm seeing in the preview how the shapes are going to cut on the mat in Cricut Design Space. And I'll just make a note that the faux leather material I will put down on my um, my mat to cut is going to be about one inch tall and about two and a half inches wide. You can drag these if you need to. If you're trying to fit this onto a piece of faux leather you have that's a scrap, then you can just drag them to wherever you need them to be. And click continue. And I'll be using the faux leather paper thin setting. That's my preferred setting. If you don't have that setting, you can click on Browse All Materials to search for it. And when you find it, you can click the little gold star and that will make that setting appear here in your favorites. So I've already done that and that's the little gold star there. So I will click on that setting and I always use more pressure when I use the faux leather paper thin setting. You may have a different faux leather setting you like to use, it's really up to you. We will repeat the cut as necessary and I'll show you how to do that. So we're pretty much set to go here and I will show you how to prepare the mat and make these cuts on the Cricut. So I've got Design Space all set to cut these circles using my Cricut Maker, but you can also use the Explore Air 2. You'll just want to turn your dial to custom before you make the material selection of faux leather or paper thin. And you can even cut these with the Joy. I'll link to a video I have on cutting faux leather with a Joy but the material settings are all made. I just wanna prepare my mat. And as I do that, I wanted to just talk to you for a second about placement when you're using scraps. So we know that the little circles are gonna cut out. First, I had the option of cutting them four in a row. And depending on your scrap and the placement of the design, you may want to move your circles. So for example, this is the glitter faux leather I'm gonna be cutting these circles from. And if I cut them four in a row, I don't have enough material going this way. I would have to turn it this way. And then I would get a yellow circle, a pink circle, a purple, and a blue. And that's not what I want when I'm trying to match up studs. So if I need to put my material like this, then I just have to, in design space, drag the circles. So I have two circles up here and two circles up here. So I'm ending up with matching colors of studs. So with a pattern like this faux leopard, you'll want to Again, think about your placement. If you get a circle here that's all this cream color and you get a circle from over here, they won't match. So think about the placement of your circles on your mat when you're using scrap material. Same thing with stripes. So do you want both the stripes to go this way? If so, you'll want to make sure that you're lining this up exactly level on your mat and then making sure that your circles are level in your mat preview. Same thing with this. You could end up with, with two earrings that are cut from the same material but look completely different if you're not careful with your placement. So these are just some examples of how you wanna check your placement. So when I cut glitter faux leather, I'm always using a purple strong grip mat and I place the glitter glitter side down. And a trick that I use often is I use the Cricut, the strong grip transfer tape to protect my mat from glitter. So I'll show you how I do that real quick. I just cut a small piece of this. Here's the transfer tape and I'm going to place it sticky side up on my purple mat. 
and then I will put my glitter, glitter side down. And what this does is it keeps the glitter off of the mat and it just sticks on to the transfer tape. And as always, when I cut faux leather or chunky glitter, I use blue painter's tape to tape it down to my mat. Whoops. There we go. You want to make sure whether you're using the Explore Air 2 or the Cricut Maker that your star wheels, the little white roller wheels are moved off to the side so they don't roll over your faux leather. And we'll just load the mat into the machine with the double arrow button. And we'll press the C button to start the cut. And I always like to check my faux leather cuts before I unload the mat. I like to use a sharp weeding tool to just get under there and see if the cut is complete. If not, as long as you don't unload the mat, you can press the C button again. So that's a very common trick for cutting faux leather with a Cricut. But these look pretty good, so I'm going to unload the mat and just pop these little glitter circles out. Isn't that easy? And let me get the next one out here. So the glue that I like to use to glue these into the stud settings, I like to use this Loctite super glue. It's a gel super glue, so it's really easy to put in the setting and it doesn't run all over the place. So I'll show you quickly how I do this. So the way this works is you squeeze on the sides, just a little bit of gel is inside there. Of course you'll want to check these little circles first and see if there's anything you need to trim up. You want to do that before you pop it in here. But that's it. So the glue has dried on these studs and I wanted to show you how cute they look on the little earring card. These are the ones we just made. I punched these chunky glitters with the paper punch and here are some Druzy cabochons. So we have less than a dollar's worth of materials on this card. The findings were about 60 cents and they came with the backs. The Druzy cabochons were 10 cents together and the faux leather scraps are things I would have thrown away anyway. So this is a nice little value for your customer and it's a great way to turn your faux leather scraps into cash. So remember, I showed you a couple different ways to cut the circles. If you want to get the SVG and DXF file to cut the circles yourself using your Cricut or your Silhouette, remember you can grab that from my blog and I'll leave a link in the description box for you. Also, I'll have a link for these cute little earring cards. These were less than five cents when I bought them in a pack of 200 on Amazon and they're a great way to put these together. And finally, if you wanted me to make a video on how to do the same type of studs, but using the image underneath the glass cabochon, those are also really popular. Just let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to make that video for you. So if you like this video, I really hope you'll like it and consider subscribing to my channel. I have lots of cool Cricut and crafting and jewelry making videos that I'd love to share with you. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.